Hi friends, thank you for being here. In this video, I'm gonna be covering a lot of things that I've tried recently that just did not work for me. And the big thing to underline there would be didn't work for me. They could still work for you. This is just my opinion, um, my experience that I've had with these things. Hopefully I will describe it well enough to you so that you would know whether it would work for you or not as well. But they're pretty much all things that I went in with, for some reason, really high hopes on. Maybe it was just a brand that I love. Maybe it was a type of product product I thought I would normally be really drawn to. Just a certain thing that I was really wishing to have a good experience with and it just didn't quite measure up. I was going to put this stuff at the end of my favorites video but there was just too much and I, I didn't have time by the time I did my full face of favorites. So uh, here's one thing. A new foundation that I tried recently. It's the Marc Jacobs Extra Shot um, Caffeine Concealer and Foundation. I have it in the shade Light 160 which I do feel is a good shade match. Um, I think this is a medium medium coverage product, which kind of surprised me. I thought, you know, just given the size of it, given the claim of foundation and concealer, I thought it might be a little more potent. I'm not saying it's no coverage, but I kind of expected it to go a little further, number one. And number two, it's so drying on my skin. And I go in with a lot of prep steps, okay? I'm putting on serums. I'm putting on one of the richest moisturizers I have every day under makeup. And for me to still come away just a little while later, like I I used it again today just to be like, oh, let's just get freshened up on this. Already within an hour of putting it on, I can see all these little lines around my under eye. I don't feel like the coverage all over the rest of the skin is amazing. Up around my eyebrows, like I'm just seeing every little tiny crevice on my skin way more than I want to. And I've noticed that every time I've used this, um, it's not a pretty picture by day's end, but for it to already kind of be disappointing me, it's just not my favorite formula. And I feel like lately I've been real easy to please on a lot of complexion products. Like I've found really light coverage things that I like. I've found some full coverage foundations that definitely agree with me. I can see the value and enjoy foundation products at pretty much every level of the game, you know? But this one, it's just gotta have some more moisture, I think. And if it's also dubbing itself as a concealer, you start putting it up around the under eye or maybe building it in that area. To me, it's just way too dry. Maybe for a super oily skin person, maybe that one pans out a little better. I don't know. But I really thought it was going to be a better experience than that. Um, here's another thing that I felt that way about too, and I'm not 100% writing this product off yet because I'm going to try it in another shade, but um, the Flower Beauty line, it says by Drew here on the cap, cute packaging. Um, she's come out with some correctors. It's part of the Flower Plus CBD line, and I had to get the medium peach. I really wanted to get the lightest shade, but it was sold out, and now I think this one's also sold out. The lightest shade on the website anyway, I thought appeared very similar to the Becca Corrector. Here's what the medium looks like. And this tone can be usable on my skin also. Problem here for me is the formula. It's not anywhere in the ballpark of as smooth and creamy and rich as Becca's. That's really what I've got in the front of my mind is I'm looking for something that in itself dupes the Becca formula. And that doesn't make another product a fail just because it's not exactly like it. I mean, I understand that. And in the recent video where I did the full face, I gave some options for how you can combine a couple of things and really get the same feel and effect as Becca. But I wanted this to be so much creamier if you are putting something up around the eye area. Like this is a thick cream that I feel like might do well in a pinpointed way over like a blemish, let's say, something like that. It's not a formula that you're really gonna love like right up in your eye area because for me, it's just not creamy enough. It's not as creamy as Pixie's Corrector at all. And also just coverage wise, I expected a little more out of this too. I feel like I have a hunch that if it were creamier, if it were a little more emollient, maybe it would cover a little better. But I will still try the lightest shade when it becomes available again. I will order it and give it a go. But this medium peach shade for me, I mean, it assuming the formula is the same across all shades. I think it's a little too dry for the under eye area. And also I don't think the coverage is that good. And we need coverage galore out of an under eye corrector product. However, fun fact, I am wearing one of the CBD glosses today, the Chill Out Lip Glaze. This is in the shade Let's Roll. And I think it's really pretty. I love that tone. How innovative can a brand be with a brush? You know, brushes are brushes. They can come in different cuts and different sizes. But you know what I'm figuring out that I really don't like are the brushes that have holes put in them for the purpose of putting product in those holes and then blending it on the face. 
I feel like the brush eats up so much product that way. I think you can put a lot in those holes and then end up feeling like not much is going on to the skin. I just, I think you're getting cheated. I think you're getting cheated on the product there. And it may have been created out of convenience, out of, you know, not having to use your fingers as a middleman to swipe product all over the skin. But at the same time, it's just like, where does all that product go? I know, you know, how much product can go on my fingertip and how far that can spread all over the face. But I put that same amount of stuff in these holes. This is the NYX, if I even said, this is the brush that came out with the NYX um, Bear With Me Luminous Tinted Skin Serum. And I just feel like this brush ate it up. And by the time I'm swiping it on the skin, it's like, okay, I got over a portion of my cheek and I'm already needing more makeup. Like, I don't know, guys. I'm not a big fan of a brush like this. Now, this brush still can perform to blend out decently well for me, but you best believe I'm gonna be putting that foundation on my face first and then blending it out. And again, my first reaction might have been, okay, innovative, good idea, interesting thought, but I just, I swear, I am using way more product when I put it in this because I have to add more on top of it than if I just swipe the foundation all over my skin and then blend with this, okay? And just a little preview here, I got something sent to me from Makeup Forever called Water Tone um, Foundation, and they also sent a brush, and it does appear to have a little dip in it. I'm gonna see if I have the same experience with this one as well, but I just... Mm, not loving that idea. I'm a big lover of the full face palette or just like a face palette that has all the different face steps. And so I ordered this from Ulta. It's the I Love Revolution Waffle Palette and like everything they make in this line kind of looks like a chocolate bar, but this is the waffle theme and it's full of face products here. You could probably use these on the eyes as well, but I've got a few issues with it. Number one, the tone of the bronzer. It's very, very warm. It comes off a little fake looking on the skin. Um, I know I complained about a bronzer that looked a little bit like this in the Milani Full Face Palette, but I think with the texture on that one, once I did get it blended in on my skin, it was like it just worked into the skin a little bit better and didn't become like a whole big issue for me. But um, they also have a like light setting powder here, which is fine, it's matte. Um, two shimmers and a blush. I have nothing against the setting powder and this matte blush called maple syrup. It's kind of um, rich, a little bit like plummy, as you can see. Interesting choice really for this palette, but I could see it um, working well for a variety of skin tones because it has that intensity, but also lighter skin tones can wear it softer and it looks pretty too. Um, but a big concern that I have here is this shade that is all out like metallic silver. You know, it's like a silver shade, okay? And how does that really mix with all of this? Also, the texture is such that it it's almost like a little bit creamy and it kind of pulls across the skin. So you don't have a really easy effortless blend when you put this on. And again, that tone is just, it's like glaring. It's not really like soft, beautiful, delicate highlight. It's like, we want to put a streak on there and we don't care if that tone meshes with everything else here. It's like cool and downright silver. I just don't get that shade choice. This shade called Toasted isn't really of much use to me. It's too dark to be a highlight. Um, maybe for a light bronzer on the skin, but again, very, very metallic, so you gotta watch that. I think this palette could have been better if they would have put something a little softer right here, something that didn't contrast with everything else quite that much because it ends up looking so artificial on the skin and then the difficulty blending a shade like that to make it look a little sneakier on the skin, it's tough. I thought I was gonna like this because, you know, I love this full face idea, but they need to alter some of the shades in here, I think, to make them a little more um, realistic and workable. Although this could be an eyeshadow palette too. Might be a controversial opinion here, but I'm just gonna share. I really hoped that these would work for me, but the ColourPop Cheek Dew Serum Blushes, not a big fan of these. I've already got some shades, like I haven't had these that long. What has it been? A couple of months that they've been out and I've already got some that are sitting around separating on me. So there's that. Like you can see in the tube where pigments and formulas aren't really working, like I can see it a little bit in this one. You can shake that up, but it's hard for that to really remix back in. But the formula on these is pretty liquidy. Okay, so if I squeeze some out here, it's pretty sheer and there's a lot of moisture in it. And for me, what it's doing when I put it on my skin is I feel that 
that it's breaking down the foundation underneath because of the amount of moisture in this. Now you might say, Em, what about other liquidy blushes, serum blushes? Like for example, M Cosmetics. Those are very, very liquidy serum blushes. However, it only takes a little bit to get blended out on the skin. And so when you're using just that little bit, it's not gonna really interfere with what's going on underneath because the color is potent in just a small amount. Here, to get color, you've gotta use a little more and therefore that's more of this liquidy texture on top of the skin that you're trying to work with and blend out. And as a result, you're losing some of the coverage underneath. There are so many cream and liquid blush options coming out these days. This is just not my ideal. I do kind of like this tone of the shade called Beyond. Um, it's a really pretty dusty rose. I like what's going on there. I thought I was gonna enjoy these a lot more, but you know, it's gotta be friendly to every other step of the makeup. And if it's breaking down the foundation, how am I gonna really love that product? There is the thought that, well, maybe you could pop some on like your hand first and then just very lightly stipple it on, like just barely get pressure applied. But the product kind of still has to be worked into the skin. You know, there is some moisture in this and it has to kind of get worked in there just a little bit. And even a small amount of working in for me on these, I feel lessens the coverage underneath. So you guys know how much I use that Wet n Wild Breakup Proof Liner Pen, like a brush tip pen. It works so well. I really found that to be a nice alternative to some different high-end um, brush tip pen liners that I have. It went on smoothly. It was opaque color. And of course, you've got that ease of application. So when I saw there was a breakup proof um, retractable gel liner, I thought, well, maybe that's really good also. Maybe they're just mastering the whole game of doing liners. So I took this out of actual packaging. It was in completely sealed packaging. And from the first time I used it, I thought, what is with the skipping, the dragging, and the dryness of this? Like, did I get a dud? I don't know. But this is not like any kind of gel pencil I've used before. It's so dry. I mean, it's really like the ones I've used in the past. And since that time, you know, there have been things called gel pencils where you put them on and hardly any pressure has to be applied. And they're very, very easy to work with, very user friendly. And this reminds me of those old school pencils where there's pulling, there's tugging, there's pressure that has to be applied. And I, like I said in a previous video, I'm losing all tolerance for any kind of struggle around the eye area with applying something. Like it needs to go on easily. This just flat out doesn't. And it was a brand new out of the package product. I just, I, I don't get it. I wanted it to be so much better. This Lancome Lash Adol Mascara here. I know you've probably seen a lot of people hyping this up because I know there's a lot of um, Lancome sponsorships going around on social media. This Mm, uh, this mascara does not do it for me at all. It doesn't do great on the curl holding. Uh, it doesn't give me that big lash look that I'm after that superhero gives me. This is just probably a random occurrence, but sometimes the little stopper doesn't stay stuck down when I pull it out. Um, I watched some people with really beautiful natural lashes put this on on social media and yeah, they come away looking awesome. I don't have the most amazing natural lashes, so my result is just kind of average with this stuff. Um, it's a rubber bristle brush. Yeah, the bristles are kind of short. There's a little bit of a curve to it and a bit of a taper, like the bristles get shorter toward the end and it just gets smaller in size, the brush altogether. And um, I don't have a problem with that. I think it's easy to maneuver and work with. It's not too big and bunglesome. I'm not like hitting myself on the eyelid every time I try to put this on. But by an average experience, I just mean, you know, the length is not amazing. It's not building awesome thickness. And then the formula is such that it's not really like freezing on the lashes and holding the curl. That's kind of what the caviar volume did for me from Laura Mercier. I think it dried so quick that that's why it held the curl so well. And it, it holds the curl like all freaking day. Sorry. It holds the curl all day for me, this stuff. Now I had some high hopes for this CoverGirl Lash Blast Clean because several of you recommended this to me like it was a game changer. And I started using it and is this supposed to be like the driest mascara known to man? Like you pull it out, very little on the brush, you start putting it on and you can hardly see it. And it seems like the formula is just super dry. Sometimes I can get on board with a real dry mascara because you know, if it dries quicker on the lashes that can help my curl holding and all. But like, is it supposed to be incredibly dry? Let me know. I don't love using this on its own. Even after two coats, it's just like not enough for me. It does do some good separating. I can tell it's separating, but it's not built up big lashes, you know? And again, it just seems unexpectedly dry as it goes on. But here's the thing, guys. I put this on 
first and then built up like with a random mascara that I didn't even like that much, like the Revlon So Fierce Big Bad Lash and put some of that on top. And the result was great. Like this turned out to actually be a pretty good primer mascara. And I've layered different things on top and really like my end result. So there is kind of like a half happy story to this one for me. But let me know, like, is it supposed to be an incredibly dry mascara or did yours seem somewhat creamy? Because I wouldn't even say this seemed creamy at all. It just very, very dry. Oh, and here's my last thing, guys. And I say I had high hopes for this because I love so much of what NARS does. Like, NARS is doing maybe some of the best complexion stuff across the board out there. Like they have multiple foundations that I love. They have great concealers that I love. They're doing so much right. And then they put out this eyeshadow palette called Summer Solstice, which is beautifully packaged. And it's kind of following that theme of like the way the Huda palettes are, you know, these little nine pan guys. The issue here for me is that there is hardly any depth. You have this one dark shade. You've got glitz galore. You also have a matte right here. So two mattes total. This is your darkest all this glitz and only one way that's not really all that dark to take it down a notch. You know how I feel about dark shades and palettes. They are so necessary. Even in a nine pan palette, give me at least two dark shades, like deep, dark, rich shades that can anchor some of these beautiful glowing shimmers. Some of these are really pretty. Granted, some are also a little bit dry, but uh, like they have potential to pop, but all we have to work with that, all we have to put alongside that is that one brown. And I think this could have been so much more versatile if they threw in one other dark shade, be it a burgundy or maybe even like a dark charcoal. Heck, even like navy blue popped in here. That would have been kind of unique and that would have been a really pretty contrast to some of these things. Instead we get this where once that shade shears out a little bit it's not really all that intense even and I, I need more contrast in a palette like this to make it work because we've got all this flash, all this glitz and literally like one shade that can take it down a notch and then one little helper blender guy over here. So could have been great but really not so great. So guys that's my stuff that just didn't work out wonderfully for me. Again and whenever I can track down the lightest shade of this um, Flower Beauty CBD brightener stuff, whenever I get that lightest shade, I will be trying it. But it's kind of like still a formula concern for me, but I do still want to test it out. Again, we are not all going to have the same experiences with makeup because number one, we got different preferences, different things we like and don't like. And number two, we've all got a different canvas that we're putting stuff on. So one that responds really well to one kind of formula might not respond well to another. So hopefully Hopefully I described these things well enough so you could understand how it might or might not work for you. But thank you so much for your time. You don't know how much I appreciate you taking time out of your days to sit and watch a video or listen to a video while you're folding your laundry or cooking a meal or whatever. Having a workout and hearing I'm like your workout buddy, that is so, so cool. So thank you so much and I will see you very soon. Love you. Bye.